Hello and Happy New Year to you and your family. Hope all is well in the new year. This month we'll be celebrating the great Dr. Martin Luther King. The East Cleveland Public Library has put together a series of videos we think you'll enjoy. Let's get started. We have a wonderful guest today. He was born in Montgomery, Alabama. He has a long history in the Civil Rights Movement. In 1960, he was elected President of the Civil Rights Committee at the Greater Abyssinia Baptist Church in Cleveland. Three years later, he attended a march on Washington for jobs and freedom where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his famous speech, I Have a Dream. In 1964, he established a record shop in East Cleveland. Later on, he established two more. In the following year, this gentleman helped to promote a unified effort by civil rights organizations across the Cleveland area, raising bail money for civil rights workers and demonstrators in the South. Today, we bring to you an advocate for diversity, for peace, for the rights of individuals, Mr. Charles Bibb Sr. Good afternoon. Thank you, Ms. Karen Murray, for the beautiful introduction. It is with great pleasure that I'm here today at the East Cleveland Public Library to continue what we've been doing for the last 20, 25 years each year for Martin Luther King. We did the march for Martin. We marched from the East Cleveland Public Library to Starlight Baptist Church. Because of COVID-19 this year, we won't be able to do it. But I'm still happy to be here to give you a little background on how we got to have this holiday. I want to share with you how I got involved with the Civil Rights Movement. There's a young man named Carl B. Stokes, who's a state representative, and he was running all over the county, the state representative at that time, he ran for the whole county. And he, he found out on the west side, the children were only going, the children were going full time, and on the east side, we were only going a half a day. Carl said we must organize and make sure in the Cleveland School District that everybody gets equal education even at the kindergarten level. And that was at the kindergarten level that the children were born half a day in the African American community and full time in the white community and that wouldn't work. So we organized civil rights and I've been working with civil rights ever since then and it has been a pleasure and a hobby and a job all rolled up in the one. After we finished getting the school system of Cleveland straightened out and they made sure that everybody got the same equal opportunity for education, I became interested in Great Apple Senior and we worked on the Civil Rights Organization under the leadership of Reverend E.T. Cavanis of Great Apple Senior and I was elected president of the Civil Rights Committee. As president of the Civil Rights Committee, they were working on a national movement to have a march on Washington. We took part in that march, and I was working with the union, and the union sent me up there, and they had a car, not a car load, a plane load of people from Cleveland to go to the march. They say it was 200,000, but there was a bit of a half a million people up there to see this young man from the South delivered this speech. We didn't know at the time that it was going to be so heavy, but it was the heavy thing that we all heard, and most of you have heard it. I have a dream. To bring that to light, I have a dream. You might remember the speech he dreamed of. Little white boys and little white girls holding hands, going together. We could not imagine that ever happening, because at that time there was lynching all over the South, and fire burns, burns in the North. But just this last week, in the state of Georgia, an African-American got elected to the United States Senate, 
and a Jewish American got elected to the United States Senate at the same time and the first time anything like that has ever happened. And that was what Martin had in his dream, that one day we would all be together in the state of Georgia, which is one of the biggest lynching states in the country. Then later on, that was in 1963, Martin came north to start to organize. We started at Olivet Institutional Baptist Church under the leadership of Reverend Hoover. That's Carol Hoover's father, who was the pastor of the church at the time. It was no more than 15 or 20 of us at the most that met Martin because he was a young man trying to lead older men and they were not quite ready. But we stuck with it and he kept marching and kept marching. And one of the things in the South, they would have the sit-in workers, they would take them and put them in jail and take the bail, up, bail money high so they couldn't get out. So in 1965, Martin came back to Cleveland and we raised lots of money to get the people out of jail who were doing sit-ins in the South. We had a big event at the Cleveland Convention Center. We had people such as James Brown, Rita Franklin, Mahalia Jackson, Harry Belafonte, all came to Cleveland to raise money. They didn't charge any uh, fees for their services. They did it for Martin, and we raised more money than any state in this country for Martin to get the young people out of jail. That was when we first met him, and some of you might be able to see the picture in the front, and it was such a big event that he brought his wife, Nora. She didn't come out much because she had the four little children at that time. And that was an outstanding event, and that went down in history as the biggest fundraiser that Martin Luther King Jr. had during the movement. The next time we met and worked with Martin Luther King was on voter registration. In 1965, Carl B. Stokes ran for mayor, and he lost, it was a close to next. We didn't have enough African-American registered to vote, so Martin come back to help us and took Jesse Jackson on the back of a flatbed truck and went all over Greater Cleveland and including East Cleveland. At one time, we had a Burger King right up there next to Pizza Hut, where Pizza Hut was. And we had Martin out there speaking to us. And we got lots of people registered. So in 1967, we got Carl Stokes elected mayor of Cleveland, the first African-American elected mayor of a major city in the United States. And the next year, we got his brother elected for the United States Congress, the only, at that time, the only African-American congressman in the state of Ohio. But all that came about because of what we were doing for the Civil Rights Movement and working with the politics. Now, we have to continue this. And for the young people, please pick up the mountain. We're going to be doing some things this year to try to carry the baton and give it to the next generation. So we're going to be working with the library and working with Starlight Baptist Church, what we've been doing for the last year or so, trying to get young people involved because the job is not, is not finished. Cleveland is the largest, poorest city in the United States, and East Cleveland is the poorest, small city in Ohio. So we must work to change this. We must get good education. With good education come good jobs, and with good jobs come good business. And working together, we can do this. And so we're going to be having some meetings. As soon as COVID-19 gives us a little chance, we'll do it. But we're not going to stop because of COVID-19. If we have to do Zoom calls and conference calls, we'll do that. But we will keep the plan going. Let's keep March, March going. We have to do this because if it's to be, it's up to me. Thank you.